We welcome you to Coma Park High School in St. Paul, where Keystone Productions proudly presents high school girls basketball. Tonight's game is a non-conference bout between two teams looking for momentum at the midway point of the season. They are the St. Paul Academy Spartans from the Tri-Metro Conference and the St. Paul Coma Park Cougars from the St. Paul City Conference. All the action is coming up momentarily. Hello again, everyone. Mike Beaton along with Broderick Bell. Broderick, we have two teams tonight who average only 40 points per game coming into tonight. With that in mind, what's the plan of attack for both teams? Well, I think they need to still try to get 40. How about that? <laughs> Just kind of work at it. Basically what they say at this time of the year, they want to try to get that defense up, try to get a little offense and see what they, that what they can do. They're, they're still trying to see with how they can be, and that's understandable. She's a new coach, and this is a young team. For Como Park, it's been an uphill battle this season. Yes. But their shining star is their leading scorer and freshman, Tierra Grayson, number 24. Yes, yes. She's very good, good solid ball handler, a, a great, has great athleticism, has a whole lot of potential. And Como Park can't write off St. Paul Academy, who will come at you with defense. At the front of this defensive line is Tori Belkin, who leads the, the Tri-Metro Conference in blocks and is also the team's leading rebounder. In addition, the Spartans have a perimeter shooter who defies the meaning of underclassmen. We're not talking about a sophomore, a ninth grader, or even an eighth grader. Jenna O'Brien, who leads the team in three-point field goals, is in seventh grade. That's good that if they have a young talent like that to come up, uh, that's something to build on there at SPA. It's great. Uh, the, the, the one thing I'll be looking at is the shot blocker, the rebounder, because that's the key. If he can just go ahead and one and done on defense, it's just great. And that also brings the anchor to your defense. If you can funnel everything into her and she can get a block shot or a rebound and able to start your break or your offense, then you can go ahead and have some, some success. The tip-off is coming up shortly. We hope you'll join us for the fun. Hello again, everyone. We are here on a rather chilly evening tonight. I tell you, I miss El Nino already. And Broderick, I'd say we're looking at two fairly even teams here. Como Park coming into tonight's game at two and six. They lost their first conference game to Humboldt. St. Paul Academy at three and seven. They are two and three in conference play and picked up their first non-conference victory against Marshall over the weekend. Okay, uh, they're in the Tri-Metro, right? Yes, they're in the okay, Tri-Metro Conference. They're in a very, very well, what you call a well-coached league. Exactly. So, uh, he's young and I'm sure he's taking his lumps pretty much uh, with, uh, with his kids right now. But uh, with the youth that's just going on, they can't help but learn. Um, that Tri-Metro probably, uh, to me, pound for pound, is probably one of the better coached leagues in the whole state. The starting lineups for tonight's game. We have Kristen O'Brien, Niambi Mitchell, Megan Leslie, Jory Belkin, and Natalie Olson Studler for St. Paul Academy. On the floor for Como Park is Brianna Furhalter, Yasmin Salan Dean, Brittany Stevenaylor, Mia Lott, and Reality Edmondson. Both teams tonight very young. Uh, on Como Park's end, you only have three seniors, and for St. Paul Academy, just two. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. The tip is off. Let's go have some fun. St. Paul Academy with the first possession. Come on, the man to man. Keep an eye out for St. Paul Academy. They like to run a, four, a swing motion, four out, one in. I tell you what, I like Como's intensity on defense. It's really good. The hands are up on that left first exchange. And they start the game, forcing the first turnover. 17.46 to go. We just got started. Como's got a 2-3 zone going, huh? They're going to counter it with a 3-2 high-low. 
Now they've gone down to a 3-2 three, three low post. As yeah, they're going with a 3-2 high low. SBA likes to run a man-to-man -man on defense. Shot no good by number 32, Brittany Steven Ayler. But they recover and score the first basket of the game. Niambi Mitchell with the ball, goes out to Jory Belkin. Watch out for her on defense. And the layup no good by Kristen O'Brien. Rebound by number 50, Yasmin Salim Dean. 32 with the shot, no good. That was Steven Ayler. And the rebound by Olsen Studler. Here comes St. Paul Academy. Belkin. Como's allowing too much that in, that post entry on their pass. And the nice jumper by Megan Leslie and St. Paul Academy gets on the board. We're tied up at two. Great shot. Como's got to take away that post entry. Edmondson to Steven Ayler. Goes out There's to a great steal. Burhalter. She had her hands in the passing lanes on that one. Good job. Stephen Ayler with it again. Goes out to Mia Lott. And a block. Nice block. I believe that was Belkin on the block. Belkin did a great job. She leads the Tri-Metro Conference in blocks. She had her hands up and she was waiting on it. It's the way they draw it up on the board. Just sitting patiently. Absolutely. And because of that, St. Paul Academy will get a chance to score off of a turnover here. Give and go. O'Brien. There's that Olsen low post Stumler entry again. Gets the layup. The they, point blank shot. They have to negate that low post entry. They fronted it, but they were unable to stop it from getting in. They have to negate that. Edmondson to Berhalter. And the ball gets stripped away. St. Paul Academy will recover it. And you've got number 45, Kristen O'Brien. She gets fouled. Non-shooting foul. SPA will inbound it. Leslie to Belkin. Goes out to Kristen O'Brien. Goes back to Leslie. Here comes Niambi Mitchell to Joy Belkin with the shot, no good. Rebound, Olsen Studler. She hands it off to Leslie who fires a shot, but that's too strong and Como Park will recover it. Edmondson wanted to take it herself and she loses the ball. She was out of control coming in there like that. She needs to take her time. There's no shot clock in high school basketball. Could have shown a little more patience Absolutely. in that Absolutely. We don't like to see our quarterbacks do that. We like to see them come down and set up the play. Wouldn't you love to tell that to Tony Romo? <laughs> yes. Sure, he had a long trip home. Oh, and I a think steal. So. Oh, it was a brand new ball. <laughs> Niambi Mitchell comes up with it. And she's going to take it. No, she's not going to take it herself. She's going to go out to Belkin. Nice Who's pass job is deflected. Koba. Nice job. Back and forth here. Edmondson takes the shot herself. No good. Rebound. Megan Leslie. Kristen O'Brien with it. Here comes Troy Belkin, who gets the two points from inside. Nice. Mike, you see that for the low post again. They need to front that low post like that. They cannot let her get that ball so easily in the low post. It's going to kill them. SBA leads 6 to 2. Shot no good by nice rebound. Steven Eiler. Follow through. Cleaning SBA up. is in a 2-3 zone. They need to block out a little bit better. Coma Park cleans up that. Mass 6-4. Yes. Coma credit. They like to stay in that man-to-man. -man. That's good. That's the best way to train a young team. Develop the athleticism. Stay in that man-to-man. -man. Meanwhile, another steal by Coma Park. And Siebenhaler comes up with it, goes to Reality Edmondson, who shot it, comes up no good. Olsen Studler with the rebound. St. Paul Academy gets the ball again. Niambi Mitchell tried it, no good. Belkin has it, her shot's no good. Rebound, Niambi Mitchell, and she gets fouled. And the aggressiveness on the offensive board pays off. St. Paul Academy will go to the line for two free throw attempts. 
Coach Hayes can't be happy with that rebound exchange like that. St. Paul Academy had three shots at it. They got to turn around and push their ball players out of there. I don't like to say box out. I say block out. Go get them. Mitchell makes her first. Coming into tonight, she was a 74% free throw shooter, 26 of 35. Coincidentally, she is the team's best free throw shooter. Sinks both. Ball is stolen by Megan Leslie. Tierra Grayson is in now for Como Park. She is the team's leading scorer. She might be able to change up a couple things, and Como nearly gets a steal, but uh, ball goes out of bounds before they can do anything with it. I'll tell you what, I like Como's quickness. They, they work hard. Their coach is insistent on them. They're working hard. It's exactly how you build teams, good defense. And, and Como Park's coach knows a thing or two about basketball. She's a former, she's a former Golden Gopher. Here comes Mitchell. Are, are you Her saying, shot's blocked. Are you saying she's been around the basketball court once, once or twice? Uh, yes, in the okay. early 90s, she was uh, played at the University of Minnesota, who of course beat Wisconsin a couple days ago, 71-53. You can tell, I mean, the, the intensity's there. This is Seabernay. High low. Salon Dean with the shot, no good. Rebound, Edmondson, and it gets There's blocked by block Belkin, but they come up with it. Edmondson gets another shot. That's no good, but Salon Dean with the rebound. She can't get it to fall. St. Paul Academy has the same problem with Como. They have to turn around and put a body on some people. And General O'Brien misses her target. You know, Como the, will get the ball back. On the rebounding, I'm a firm believer, especially with the young team. Instead of boxing out, trying to find a box out of area, turn around and find somebody and blow them out of there. And I, I just think, it, you know, you'll have a much better success. Ball is stolen by Kristen O'Brien. Niambi Mitchell's wide open, and she can't get the layup. Rebound. Como needs to take care of the ball better. Rebound was by Berhalter. This is turning into a track meet. Mitchell, three is no good. Belkin with the rebound and she gets draws the foul. On the floor, out of bounds. Oh, you're starting to see some fatigue now. 11:51 to go. Como Park already. Their hands has are down. See that? Their hands are down. Como Park already has three fouls and 11:51 to go in the half. The score is eight to four in favor of St. Paul Academy. Here's Jenna O'Brien. The seventh grader. Traveling violation. Forgot to dribble the ball there. Yes. That happens from time to time. She's a seventh grader. With time, that should fade away. Well, I see some older 24 year olds forget to <laughs> dribble the ball from time to time. Of course, in the NBA, they get that extra step. <laughs> what was it that you said on Friday if the referees don't see it, that it's not traveling? It's not traveling, that's right. Jump ball, possession arrow points to Como Park, and we have two substitutions coming in. Jacqueline Norton and Brianna Rick come in, replacing Jory Belkin and Megan Leslie. On defense, St. Paul Academy, as you can see, does not have a very deep squadron, so they have to change it up every so often. Salon Dean gets the roll. Goes out to Norton. Norton is it's trapped. She's trying to get rid of the ball. Push foul. Bailed her out. She was in trouble. She did a great job of killing the ball too. It was good. Yeah. Got her to pick the ball up. How to stop her good? The current leading scorer for Como Park is Yasmin Salandine with six. So she scored all their points so far. And another foul. Get on your feet, That's just one. The foul is on Tierra Grayson. Como Park only one more foul to give. 10.51 to go in the first half and they're down by two. They do not want to be putting SPN on the line. Yeah. 
Kristen O'Brien misses her first. Michael, you jinxed them. <laughs> I didn't jinx her. She was supposed to make that. Well, O'Brien 64% coming into tonight's game, 23 of 36 on the season. She's going to make this one. Oop. Okay, I think the fault belongs to both of us, but she gets her own yes, rebound. It's our fault. <laughs> gets her own rebound. Fortunately, can't get the shot to fall. This is Sieber Naylor with the ball. To Tierra Grayson. This is for three. No good. And the rebound picked up by Norton. Jenna O'Brien moves up with it. To Mitchell. Norton tried to get it inside, but the ball is stolen by Grayson. She can't hang on to it. Mitchell picks it up. She forgot the ball. <laughs> and Mitchell. Nice block. Layup, no good. Salon D comes up with it. Both teams with plenty of scoring opportunities, but have not been able to convert. That's what they call youth. There's a good looking shot. Grayson, air ball. Well, you know, there's a sign of fatigue there. She might be a little bit tired. Here comes Norton. She's going to take a shot. Short. She gets her own rebound. Hands it out to Jenna O'Brien. She can give them range, but that doesn't fall. So nice rebound. rebound. You mentioned about the young team. Only five seniors altogether in tonight's game. Wow. Salon Dean to Grayson. Grayson gets the shot. And the foul. She'll be going to the charity stripe for the two plus one. Nice job by Grace. Follow through on that. The only comment I have is she dribbled the ball before she put it back up. She should just go right back up. Grace in their leading score, averaging 14.3 points a game. Gets the three-point play. Nice job. Como Park takes back the lead. It's 9 to 8 with 9.27 to go. Mitchell shot. Misses her target. That was a pass. I think she might have, if she'd have went all the way to the basket, she might have been successful. But that's good. She was looking to pass to a teammate and set up the play. That's, a, that's always good. Steven Naylor out to Grayson. Salon oh, good Dean. hands. She can catch. Grayson shot no good. Norton to Jory Belkin. Her shot over the board basket, but Brianna Rick cleans up that mess. And we've got our first time out of, of the game. And Todd Johnson has some inside information he'd like to tell us. Well, guys, an interesting start to this game. St. Paul Academy moving the ball around pretty well. They have 10 points scored by five different players. For Como Park, their inside game seems to be where all the action is. Uh, Yasmin Saladin scored the first six points of the game. It seems as though Como Park really needs to feed the ball inside. That's where all the action is. And on the other basket, she fed her teammate on a great assist. So again, St. Paul Academy doing a great job spreading the ball around. They need to continue to do that. Como Park, feed it on the inside. Back upstairs, you guys. St. Paul Academy has had a very balanced scoring so far. Um, they have, out of their 10 points, five of their players have put up two. Right now, SPA is yet to find a leading score. That's early. It's early. Como Park, on the other hand, it's been mostly Salon Dean with a dash of Grayson. Six points for Salon Dean, three for Grayson. You know, Salon Dean's catching that ball in the low post, and she's uh, putting it back. She's doing a good job. Aggressive uh, on the boards. Yes, aggressive on the boards. She's got great hands. You know, she's been out there all night, and she, you know, she's still showing that she can catch the ball. From what I've seen so far, both these teams have talent. They have pieces of the puzzle. They just need to find some other pieces to connect, and you can see some two very competitive teams in the year down, oh, a year a year or no two doubt. from now. There's no doubt. Siebernaler with the three. No bullseye, but the rebound by Brianna Bunting-Kennedy. That's a mouthful. Ball nearly strips, but it's a foul on SPA. On Niambi Mitchell, that's the first team foul for the Spartans, believe it or not. 
in second. Shot no good by Burhalter. Here comes SPA, Megan Leslie. Getting around the corner, goes out to O'Brien. Jory Belkin shot no good. Kristen O'Brien comes up with the board. Jenna O'Brien's gonna take a shot, that's too strong. Tierra Grayson comes up with it. Mitchell looking for a steal. She has both of St. Paul Academy's fouls at this point. Two fouls with 45 left to go in the half. That's not good. Uh, the coach might be looking to take her out. Jenna O'Brien pokes the ball away. Como Park will keep possession. Yep, here comes the starter out. Hayes heard you. Jacqueline Norton comes in. In high, school, in high school basketball, you're only given five fouls, and then you're out. Not six as, uh, not six as you might see in the pros. Grayson called for a traveling violation. Yeah, but you know, she was, she was trying to get it down to the big man like the coach wants. Nice job. So. Rihanna Rick looking for a target. Oh, and a foul on Mia Lotz. Hold on the jersey. If she'd been playing football, that would have been holding. Only if the referee sees it. <laughs> well, the referee did see it. Como Park now out of fouls to give. The thing I liked about it, though, she had her hands up, and that's good. Leslie, see how her hands are up? See, that makes it difficult, and that's good. In and out. Rebound that's, that's by Jenna O'Brien. That's Norton. She gets the long jumper. 12-9, Spartans lead. Steal by Norton, and she's got Megan Leslie wide open. Here she comes, and a foul. Brianna Burhalter wasn't going to let her get the easy two. She's going to make her earn them or earn those points. Oh, absolutely, nothing easy. That's a that's a sign. You play the ball hard. It's it's not dirty basketball. It's just good hard basketball. It's and good. Megan Leslie only 41 percent coming into tonight from the free throw line. See now you call that a good foul. See. There's a saying in basketball, if you're going to follow them, follow them good. Make Leslie sinks one of two, SPA three of four from the charity stripe so far. There are some pretty crazy fans over there trying to throw off her concentration. Tierra Grayson gets the pass out. It goes out to Siebernailer after Nice exchange. drop down there. And Great the shot block. is blocked by Belkin. Jacqueline Norton, she's not going to take her time. She's looking to take this ball somewhere. She's trapped, gets out of it. Megan Leslie out to Belkin. She can't hang on to it. And we have a foul. And Looking, judging by the reaction, and indeed it is, the foul is on Salon Dean. SPA will automatically go to the line. This is a one and one. Belkin, 45% from the line, 17 of 38 coming into tonight's game. Defensively, though, she's averaging eight rebounds and two blocks a game. Belkin, three blocks so far, sinks her first. She's doing a good job. She has her hands up and really playing great defense. Yeah. Belkin averaging 2.1 blocks per game. And, and the coach is staying in a 2-3 zone, I think, to basically uh, keep them from using a whole lot of energy right now. Just stay, stay the course, maintain your lanes on and defense. SP doing well. See her hands are straight up on the floor. That's good basketball. SP doing well from the charity stripe. They come up with the ball again. This is Jacqueline Norton. She goes out to General O'Brien, who yes. takes the shot, but she gets called for a traveling violation. She forgot to dribble. Exactly. That Jumped happens. once too many times. It happens. Yes. Yeah. Got to let those things go. Absolutely. Next play. Yes. But passes nearly stripped away. is going to take a three. No good. 
Grayson with her rebound goes out to Salon Dean. Back out to Grayson. She'll try a jumper. In and out. Salon Dean with the rebound and cleans up the mess. All right, Salon Dean is doing a great job underneath. And SPA with a mistake. Oh my goodness. Judging by the reaction on Megan Leslie, she wants that one back. Fatigue. We have fatigue going on. You see them clutching at their pants. All that stuff, hands are down low. Meanwhile, Salon Dean has been keeping Como Park in this game in the early going. She's doing a with great it. job. Grayson for three. Ball's on. Grayson hits her. Cougars pull within one. Jenna O'Brien is trapped. Five second violation. Is Coach called a timeout right away. Oh, timeout. Hayes calling for the five seconds. Absolutely. But SPA got the bailout timeout in there before Absolutely. that happened. In the meantime, we haven't done one of these yet. Let's cut to our first trivia question of the night. This is from the St. Paul City Conference, if you're interested. Who is the only Como Park player listed in the top 25 for career free throw percentage in the St. Paul City Conference? It's a mouthful, I know. Carly Ross, Colleen Giller, Jenna Giller, or Emily Stahl? Oh, Colleen Giller. Colleen Giller is right. I believe she's related to Jenna Giller. Is she really? Well, they both have the same last name. You never know. That is true. Good job for Colleen. In the meantime, SPA continuing with their balanced scoring. Leslie with three points. Niambi Mitchell has two. Their leading scorer so far has been Belkin with four. And for Como Park, it's been all Salon Dean with a dash of Grayson. Guys, basketball is a game of momentum. SPA went on a 5-0 run. Como Park has answered with a 4-0 run of their own. All of Como Park's points, except for that last three-pointer, have come from inside the paint. So if Como Park can start hitting from the outside, that could open up a lot of things for them. SPA, uh, they got to hang on to the basketball. Thank you, Todd. Here comes Kristen O'Brien with the layup. Left-handed layup, I think it was. Right-handed. Nonetheless, two points. Any way you slice it. I'll tell you what, I, I'm impressed with Como's defense. They're staying in the man-to-man, -man, and, and that's, the good, that's a good way to start building your team. Grayson responds. That's her fifth point. Como Park finally bringing a little balance into the scoring. And Grayson looking for the steal. Almost got a foul there. Olsen Studler misses the sh Grayson with shot. the rebound. Good job. And here comes Berhalter. Goes out to Grayson for three. I think that was deflected. No good. Kristen O'Brien with the rebound. She's got Olsen Studler down the court. Salon Dean picks up the foul. Olsen Studler will go to the charity stripe. Coming into tonight's game, Olsen Studler 38% from the charity stripe, three of eight. And we're bringing the starter back in. Time out on the floor. Coach Hayes has to be concerned with uh, Salon Dean's foul situation. Um, that's a good timeout because, again, we got we have fatigue going on here. Um, you don't want to get them tired because when they get really tired, that's when they make the, the what we call the stupid foul. And I think uh, that's a good way to try and keep her in the ball game because they need her. She does a good job. Um, on the other hand, it looks like uh, St. Paul Academy needs their point guard, and they brought her back in after, you know, she got her uh, second foul. So um, he must he must see something there, and he needs his point guard back in the game. You mentioned that fatigue is a factor when you have a, two teams as young as SPA and Como Park. Absolutely. In the meantime, Olsen still won't go back to shoot her second free throw. You, cha you change your coaching strategy. It's, it's not by the book. You gotta have to feel for it. I talked with Mark Heiser yesterday before the game, and he told me just that with a young team and not a whole lot of depth, he can't. 
He can't use the man-to-man -man defense as he likes to. No, no. Kristen O'Brien with the last basket. And Brianna Berhalter shot off the rim. Rebound, Olsen Studler. I, I'll tell you what, St. Paul Cavs getting a lot of rebounds. Though. For a young team, they're staying in that 2-3, and they're picking up rebounds. Meanwhile, Siebernaler with the steal. Berhalter's shot is blocked. It's stripped away. Here comes Megan Leslie. She's broken away. Here she comes. Gets the right-handed layup. And the Spartans again pull out the lead to five, which has been their largest lead of the night so far which tells you that uh, Coma Park's not gonna give up easily. Leslie again, you've gotta be kidding me. Here she comes. This is getting crazy. Uh, she's having problems with making the wing entry on her pass. And instead of the obvious, if she goes right, maybe she should just pass right. Instead, she's trying to pass left. And uh, SBA's there with, uh, with her hands in the lane. That's an easy steal. Grayson for three. I hear Coach Hayes holler. Move, Over move, the move. rim. Cut, make a move. Out now. Leslie, that's six straight points. St. Paul oh Academy goodness. starting to pull away a little bit. What's happening is, again, like I said, the fatigue factor, and Como's unable, unable to get back uh, on defense. Look at Reality Edmondson. She's panting as she's coming down the court. They are getting really tired fast. Siba Naylor, no good. Kristen O'Brien with the rebound. See, with a young team, if they can sense fatigue, if you can get them to slow up and just play a little bit more offense. Jenna O'Brien, well over the mark. You, you'd just be, you're just better off. It's best to chase. I mean, just pass the ball and do a whole lot of chasing. In the meantime, SBA has pulled out to a nine-point lead, their largest of the night, 25-16. First half almost coming to a close. See Coach Hayes pulled out. Grayson with. See Grayson needs to slow up right now. Just take her time. And see, that's tr you're asking for trouble. Draws the charge. She made a beautiful steal, and that will come with time. She'll come down, slow up, wait till everybody catches up to her, set up, make a play, and, and get two points. Just takes time. Well, they say youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> time and. For you Coma Park fans watching this, patience, 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 and patience gets Kristen O'Brien another layup. I'm not allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you're okay. Air ball from I, I get, Berhalter. I, I get words hollered at me from the production box. <laughs> That's but you're exactly right, Mike. Just patience. Just be patient. You're talking about that. Uh, that's why I'm inside the truck. I can't get yelled at. Uh, by, well, I yes. do, but it's not from an IFB. They'll holler at you later. <laughs> exactly. Now, see, here's the thing. That's it. Como, take your time. Come on down. We're not in a hurry. There's no shot clock. None. Just take some time to rest oh, yeah. up a little bit. That's it. Move the ball around. Just move it. Just move it. Move it. Move it. And, and the thing I like about St. Paul Academy, they're finding ways to get a trap going on with their with their zone. They're finding ways to create some defensive havoc. It's a good job. Grayson with the good basket. Good shot by Grayson. Como Park needs that. Yes. To try to uh, freeze up the Spartans a little bit. We're in the final Com minutes. Como's in, a, Como's in a zone themselves. Oh, there was a good steal SP opportunity until by until that basket was on a 10-0 run. Jenna O'Brien thought about a three, but she'll take a two-pointer instead. That falls. And nice. she needs that right about now. Nice job by the underclassman. And we mean underclassman, seventh grader. Out to Grayson. They're going to go to her again. Air ball. Jenna O'Brien comes up with it. Less than 30 seconds. Kristen O'Brien draws the foul. Now Coach Hayes has her second team in there. And with the exception of Grayson, of course, I think with the point guard. And she's slowing it up, and she, they're not, they've gone from man to man to a two, three zone. And which is a good coaching move. You, know, you, you give it three people, basically your starters, a chance to rest on the bench. And you bring in fresh people, probably younger people, 
Well, one they're bringing in now, Brianna Bunting Kennedy, is not exactly young. She's a senior oh, guard. Oh, okay, so senior guard. I'm sorry. And, and, and number 40. And then, none, nonetheless, it's probably not one of your frontline ball players. And she's she's then now going to a zone, so she could be much more have uh, much more effective defense right now. Well, with the team that she has on the floor. Well, Brian sinks one of two. SPA has uh, pulled out to a 12-point cushion right now. Nice Number find. Nice find. Good job. Patience. See what happens. The P word. The it works. Five seconds. And it goes out to Belkin. Ah. And Patience gets them one more layup yes, before the end of the half. one more layup. And it's just a, it's, that was just two great exchanges there. Both coaches can go into the locker room and, and, and talk about those. And that's how you, that's how you build your team. SP De develop the muscle memory. SPA using every last second that they had at their disposal, and they have a 12-point lead, 32-20 to 20 in the first half. Well, Todd Johnson's going to talk a little bit with uh, Coach Mark Heiser, and later on he also has uh, some additional information on a very special player, the underclassman, as we were talking about. In the meantime, we'll, we'll send it over to Todd, and we will come back to you on the flip side. See you then. Coach, you close out the half on a 15-4 to run. What did you tell your kids during that last time out? Uh, we just wanted to really get up in the passing lanes, put a lot of pressure on them. Uh, we knew if we could do that, we could, we could cause some things. We really wanted them to look ahead. We were kind of having some people open down the court, but we weren't seeing them. We weren't keeping our heads up, so we kept our heads up and made a nice run there. Okay, and for the second half, you're sticking with that 2-3 zone. It seems to be bothering them quite a bit. Yep, they got one good shooter out there, and she's doing a really nice job. we got to get out on her, but we need to do a good job then inside, too, with the big players. A lot of distribution of scoring. You have about seven players in the scoring column. You like to see that. Yeah, that's really good when you get a bunch of them in the scoring column. It's always a good feeling. All right, best of luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, there you have it. Uh, Coach Mark Heiser, a nice run at the end of the half for the St. Paul Academy Spartans. Well, we're here with an underclassman, you could say that, for St. Paul Academy, Jenna O'Brien, Jenna, seventh grader. How'd you end up on the varsity here in seventh grade? Um, well, my sister's on the varsity, and I just decided to try out this year and see what happened. So. So, so tell me, last year you were playing sixth grade. What's been the biggest adjustment from sixth grade basketball to high school varsity? Um, it's a lot more aggressive, more my size. So I'm a little tall for seventh grade. Um, just fun more, I guess. How have your teammates accepted you? Obviously, you're dealing with kids a lot older. Um, they've accepted me well because I was on varsity soccer, so it works out well. So. Tell us a little bit about your team. How are you guys doing? We're doing pretty well. Um, we've lost to a few big schools in our conference. We've won two out of, I don't really know, like four, I think. So we're doing pretty well. And what are your goals personally for this year? Probably to get more aggressive for my size, my age. So people watching at home, what do they need to do to be able to play varsity basketball in seventh grade? You've obviously been playing for a long time. Tell us just a little bit about your, your background. Um, I've been playing since I was in kindergarten. Um, I played traveling when I was in fourth grade, AAU season during the summer. I don't know, just play your heart out. Okay, best of luck tonight. Thanks. All right, there you have it. General Bryant, a seventh grade starter for St. Paul Academy. You're watching High School Basketball. Okay, we're here with assistant coach Diedrich Jenkins. Diedrich, um, St. Paul Academy looks like they're giving you a little trouble with that 2-3 zone. Um, you got to start hitting from the outside. Yes, that's what we told the girls at half. We got our point guard penetrating the, uh, the top uh, top uh, guard, and the, uh, our wings got to open up and shoot it. They got to shoot the ball with confidence. They can knock these shots down, but they're rushing. But if they shoot it with confidence, I think we should uh, cut into the lead. When you get the ball in the middle, especially to Saladin, you've had a lot of success. Yes, um, and the girls are having problems getting those post-entry passes, and we work on them, man, constantly, all day long. So. They, once we get into the games and the crowd gets here, they just speed it up. If they relax and take their time, she is our bread and butter, so we're looking to go into her. Thanks. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, there you have it from the Como Park bench. Before we went smoke-free, a cloud of smoke always hung in the air. I always went home covered with cigarette smoke. After a busy night, my eyes would always burn and I'd wake up with a, a morning cough. Now that we're smoke free, our customers are happier, stay longer, and come back more often. It's now much easier to work and breathe. No one should be forced to choose between their job and their health. Thank you, St. Paul, for a smoke free workplace. Thank you, St. Paul. 
Thank you, St. Paul, for a smoke-free workplace. Our family loves to go bowling, but we've always hated going to smoke-filled bowling centers. I never understood why we were forced to breathe somebody else's smoke. It's just not right. Since St. Paul went smoke-free, things are so much better. We can now enjoy indoor fun without exposing our kids to the dangers of secondhand smoke. Thank you, St. Paul. Thank you, St. Paul. Thank you, St. Paul. Thank you, St. Paul. Thank you, St. Paul, for protecting the health of our families. We welcome you back to high school girls basketball being presented by Keystone Productions, St. Paul Academy Spartans against the St. Paul Como Park Cougars. This is a non-conference game. The leading score so far for St. Paul Academy, it's been quite balanced. Well, until Megan Leslie went on a tear there, she leads the team with or nine points. Megan Leslie with nine points, Kristen O'Brien with seven points, and Jory Belkin with six points. Everybody else has a deuce. For Como Park, only three players have contributed to the scoring. Tierra Grayson has 10 points. Yasmin Salon Dean, who had all the scoring for a cer certain amount of time, had eight points. And Harris with two points, Harris number 40. SPA only had two fouls in the first half, both uh, made by Niambi Mitchell. On Como Park's end, over 10 fouls were committed. Reality Edmondson's in foul trouble, and four of the players have two fouls. That just shows you a sign of fatigue on Como Park's end. Absolutely, uh, but I, I tell you what, I like their defense. Um, their starters are staying in man-to-man, -man and their hands are up more than they are down. And, and as a coach, you want to see that. That means they're getting stronger and uh, their endurance is picking up a little bit more. So what do you think Como Park needs to do to uh, claw their way back? Well, I think we need to, I think, uh, again, there goes that P word again. And patience. the production box, they're going to they're gonna get all over me. You're talking they about just patience. To, they need to show a little more patience on offense. And you know, the, the point guard just needs to come down and make a decision as to how she's going to make that, that wing entry pass. That's how St. Paul Academy is getting their steals. St. Paul Academy, that seventh grader, I'll tell you what, she is really mature and she's going to be some kind of player when she becomes a freshman. But she's showing a whole lot of maturity right now, and I'm sure she's getting a good sound indoctrination playing in the tri-metro. She's just going to get just better and better and better. Their big man has her hands up. They're blocking his shots. And number 45 is a good garbage person. She seems to catch everything that uh, anything loose. You know what? Those are some of the keys to, to success here. I think that... Uh, down the stretch in this second half, we're going to have a, some sort of ball game here. I think it's going to be really exciting down the stretch. Incidentally, this is this is the only St. Paul City Conference team the Spartans will face. After this, they play mostly tri-metro team. Sierra Grayson with the steal, and it gets blocked and picked up by Kristen O'Brien. Oh, my goodness. You see, some Start. of those things that Coach has got to work on, you know. Mitchell for three, bullseye. A, a simple skip pass on the ground, drop a, a bounce pass. And, Set a straight line. Those are some of the things that you pick up with, with, with maturity there. That, that was just, just a young person mistake here. Stephen Ayler with the ball. Last touched by SPA. Grayson's going to take the shot. Gets the jumper. That's 12 points for Grayson. Not a, a bad night so far. It's a good shot. She's already passed her uh, her average, or she's drawing close to it. She averages 14 a game. That's 12 already. Mitchell's going to try another three. Short this time. Kristen O'Brien with the rebound, but uh, collided with Olsen Studler. And she... Throws that pass out to no man's land. Again, defense made that happen. I mean, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing here with Como. They're doing a nice job. They just need to go ahead and get their offense together now. And you know what? I bet you about halfway through the second half, we're going to see something here. They just need to figure out, you know, how to get it done, and they will. Falcon came up with the steal. Megan Leslie's going to try a long two. No good. Rebound, Olsen Studler. But Grayson comes up with it. We're talking about defense. Now she needs to convert. Uh. Steven Ayler. 
gets the kiss off the glass. Remember I said in the first half when she got that first steal and she went barreling in there while she went down there and created some space and found the open person put it in. She learned from her earlier mistake. Absolutely. Was patient. I know that P word, I just used it again. Yes. Went out to see Benaylor and got two points out of it. You know they start, they start counting after a while. <laughs> they, they let you know how many times you use it. I know you've instilled it on me now. <laughs> Harris you know, you know try a, shot. a couple okay. more patients for me, and I'll be in the the uh, trivia question for crying out loud. <laughs> Mitchell draws the foul. Who, who leads? Who leads the city conference in the word patience? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure that you'll be also on the ballot. So there you have it. Yeah, well, I don't think John Pasepka keeps track of that. I you think never you're know. safe. I think you're safe, Broderick. You never know. We could start a new category. <laughs> There's a good looking shot. Oh, you jinxed her. Yes, I did. You jinxed her. Yeah, you jinxed the best though. free throw good. shooter on SBA. But it looked good. Salon, Salon Dean picked up a, the foul. That's her third. Ooh. And I think you got to credit that miss to the Como Park fans in attendance. Yes. <laughs> It's that not my fault. Ah! Oh, Grayson, did she step on the line? Well, it doesn't matter. They didn't call it. She didn't step on the line unless the referee saw it. And a messy exchange. Steven Ayler comes up with it and gets the bailout timeout call. Absolutely. But you see, she wasn't ready to call that timeout. The coach called that timeout. But I bet you the next time that happens, she'll call the timeout. And that's what it takes. Steven Ayler as a senior, by, by the way. Just now, learn little things to the, to the game. Now we're talking about SPA. They have a seventh grader on their team. Now, St. Paul Academy, like other trimetro schools, is K through 12. And in high school basketball, if you're going to put a seventh or eighth grader in on a high school team, they automatically have to play varsity. That's correct. Uh, how do you feel about this? I mean, she's had a few minutes in there. It's gotten one shot in there. Do you, do you think it's too early, or do you think it's just right for her to come? Well, come it in? all depends on the individual. And for her, yes, this is the right decision by St. Paul Academy. Move her out. I mean, she is showing improvement all the way. She's, she's getting it. Salon Dean comes up with her own board, and her persistence pays off. She'll go to the free throw line. They say, what do you say, they're building the garage? Well, St. Paul Academy is building the garage with that seventh grade. We're going to see other people coming behind. And uh, I, I, I expect some good things from St. Paul Academy in the future. I didn't say anything. Neither did I. But you, you thought it, Mike, I can tell. <laughs> She has but good form, doesn't it. she? That doesn't count. You see, I, I know. I haven't said anything about her free throw shooting. <laughs> now that one is on you. <laughs> That'll be our other stat. Yes, I know. Forget oh. patience. Oh, Steven Ayler with the steal. Found the open person. And a foul. And the foul. And it goes to Niambi Mitchell, I believe. It is. That's her third. She's in foul trouble. Five six sophomore guard, and she's in foul trouble. She's been doing quite well for SPA. You don't want to have her. Grayson gets the bounce. But still, she's young. She's an underclassman. She's still making those mistakes. She has to see more pressure, and she'll see a lot of pressure in the tri metro. It's just going to make it better. And oh. some nights she's going to she's going to see some bad nights. I'll tell you what, as a guard, because it's tough in that tri metro. You've got Minnehaha Academy and Breck and SPA is on the west side of that, so they face those schools twice. Megan, yeah. Megan Leslie on the line. This is her first. I didn't say anything. No, you didn't. You know, one of the things that we were taught uh, coming up, my, one of my coaches, he used to tell us to go down the basement, turn out the lights, and dribble the ball. <laughs> well, that's exactly what happens when you face a press. I mean, you, you're basically, you have to watch so many people. And I, I think that's, uh, that's some of the things that, 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 that that's, uh, these young people need to understand, that there is some art to dribbling, keeping that ball low, looking around, 
and making the good pass. That was an errant pass again, trying to do a wing entry pass opposite of where she was at, too far from, from her uh, teammate. Grayson picked up her third foul. She's in foul trouble. Kristen O'Brien having a hard time getting rid of it. She gets called for the five second violation. Homo with the good D, huh? That defense has been defense has been keeping him in. What yes. do we say? It's going to be a battle of defense. Yes. Three players on Como Park with three fouls, by the way. Got to be careful. Steal by Leslie, steal but uh, it goes back to Burhalter of Como Park, who can't put it in. But Salon Dean with the rebound and cleans up the mess. Persistence and patience have been paying off for Como Park. Nice job on the rebound, huh? Great job. Look at that defense. Just Making it tough for that guard. Troy Belkin shot, no good. Rebound, Salon Dean. Right there, Give it to Siebenhaler. Out to Salon Dean. To Burhalter. She's going to try a long one. Well off the mark. <laughs> Nothing but air. Berhalter. Fatigue is setting in here. Berhalter's a freshman, and yes, stamina, stamina and endurance are something, are two things that, uh, for a young team, they'll come in with time. Traveling violation on O'Brien. Substitution for Como Park. Harris is stepping out, and in comes Mia Lott. The Cougars, by the way, have uh, cut this 12-point deficit down to seven. I'm telling you, Mike, it's going to be a ball game at the end. Grayson with the jumper. And we've got, and Mark Heiser has seen enough. He's calling a timeout. See, that's the thing about a zone. If you stay in a zone all night, you make your adjustments at halftime, and there's holes in that zone. You have to move the ball around. A lot of times you like to go ahead and pass to that, through the post entry, that it would be good if the post person could pass and find that open person in one of the holes in the zone and get a good shot. Como Park so far in the second half has managed to uh, cap their fouling woes. They only have two so far, SPA also with two. And that's pretty good because Como's been in the man-to-man. -man. And, you know, that's usually a, a defense that uh, Especially when fatigue sets in, that you start to follow. But I'll tell you what, Como's hanging in there. They're playing tough. And Todd Johnson has something he would like to tell us. Take it away, Todd. Guys, during that last timeout, Players were told, watch Grayson. She is their best shooter. Get somebody on her. Don't give her any more open looks. Back up to you guys. And Grayson being a freshman. Find the open person. And Burhalter nearly got the end one, but will go to the charity strike. But the thing is, you could tell that Como has really stressed that at halftime. Find the extra person. Be patient. Berhalter makes her first. Two of two. That time, the only sound you could hear was the little pitter patter of, uh, of a young fan in attendance. As they say, the sound of silence can sometimes be beautiful. Absolutely. Who said no? Kristen O'Brien gets blocked. That was clean. Mia Lott blocked it and comes up with it. Now Como's taking their time, coming down. Defense and patience. There's the P word there's again. A she there's a shot. For three, short. But it's the right shot. Nonetheless, it was the right shot to take, and that's what you want to see. 
Just didn't go in that time. That's right. But there's 12.51 to go. It's only a three-point deficit. Sure. This game is by no means over. Absolutely. As we saw two weeks ago, Creighton versus Central. Creighton was down 28 points. Somebody was ready to put dirt on the grave. And what, lo and behold, here they come back. They end up losing by three. Kristen O'Brien, layup shot, no good. And Mia Lott comes up with it. That's why I love this game. Anything can happen if you, really, if you continue to work hard. It's a great game, isn't it? Absolutely. Dr. Naismith, by the way. <laughs> Referring to James Naismith, the inventor of basketball. I believe uh, is it out in Kansas University. Megan Leslie shot's no good. Dr. James Naismith, yes. Um, Norton shot, no good. At the YMCA. <laughs> so I was going to say, I believe uh, University of Kansas uh, has named the court after the doctor. Yes. Yes. Norton to inbound it. Push the ball next time, and she's going to take the shot. Did you hear the coach over Swish. there? Swish. Uh, over at Como say, settle down, settle down, settle down. See, that's just, that, they probably were talking about that at halftime a lot. I'm telling you. This is, this is going to be a good team here. This is a well-coached team. Both of these teams are just well-coached. I like what I see. 38-33. Salon Dean shot a little too strong. Now they have to come up with a stop, of course. And Kristen O'Brien draws the foul. This number 45 is really something. I mean, she, she's the straw that stirs the drink here. I mean, she, she brings the ball up, she gets the rebound, she gets, she gets steals when you want them. She's listed as a 5'8 sophomore guard and forward, so there you go. There you go. Do, do it all. That's their Jordan. <laughs> Well, Como's defense prevailed that time. They got the stop. Yes. Now the $64,000 question. Can they Will convert they score? It? Can they convert? Grayson. Too fast. Coach is not happy with that. Salon Dean draws a jump ball. Thought she drawed a foul. That's, possession is Como's. No, no. There you go. There you go. SBA tried to fool them. But, Absolutely. Uh, you're not going to fool the refs. Well, sometimes you can. <laughs> I think when you and Kwame called the game last year, something you said about the referees, traveling violation on Como <laughs> Park, by the way, that the referees are always right. Absolutely. And the second rule, if the referees are wrong, refer to rule number one. Yes. They're always right. They're always right. <laughs> Eleven oh six to go in the half. Whistle. See, Como had their hands up in that passing lane, forced them to make a bad pass. This is good. Now they need to come down and score. This is S a team that I think you know a year or two from now you could see. Uh, but SBA is packing it in tight. They're going to make it tough for the for the for the post entry. They're making it tight. Grayson's going to take the shot from outside, and she draws the foul. That's the way to get around that defense. Oh, yeah. To make him draw the foul. Make him draw the foul. It puts her to the charity stripe. She's, uh, been, their, uh, she's been their leading scorer so far with 14. Michael, it doesn't look good. See? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. See? I won't say anything. <laughs> uh, I think that'll be the other uh, stat that John Vasepka keeps from now on. Yes. I think there should be a rule that when free throws are being shot, there's a moment of silence. Exactly. I think from now on, I won't say anything when they go to the line. I, I won't either. Number 54 for SPA is working hard. She's got that ball. Belkin can't get the roll. She had to be. You notice how she got her. She got down low and pushed her out of there. That's exactly what good, good solid base. But what did she do wrong? Pop quiz. She used her right hand instead of her left hand. On the left side. That's right. You use your left hand on the left side, right hand on the right. It doesn't work like the human brain does. 
Salon Dean thought about a shot, but she's going to look, look to take it out. Ah. In reality, Edmondson, too many steps. She forgot to dribble. <laughs> Well, you could look at it in two ways. She forgot to dribble, or she forgot to pass, or a combination of both. No, I think that was a move. She forgot to dribble. She was going to the hole. O'Brien for three. Bullseye. There's that 45 again. She Kristen hits the three. She brings the ball up. She gets the open, finds she, the open pass. She, she gets, gets the rebound. She's all-around player. Salon Dean shot a little to the right. But look who comes up with the rebound, Grayson, and she cleans up the mess. O'Brien, a sophomore, so she'll be around for a few more years, yes. I tell you. She's going to get better. Watch out for this Spartan team in a couple of years. This is what Mark Heiser wanted to do, build a team that would be competitive in a oh, year Oh, absolutely. That's what, exactly what the Detroit Tigers did, and look what they did. They almost won the World Series. Yes. From a team that nobody expected to uh, stick around, even after that uh, near collapse there at the end of the season. But if you're a Twins fan, I'm sure you didn't mind. Look at Niami Mitchell, wide open. Easy layup. Almost too easy. Como does the score here, and SBA does. Look for the coach from Como to call it. She's not going to let this thing get too far out of hand. Edmondson goes out to Grayson. She's going to take another shot. That goes short, Great but she gets her own rebound. No good on that one. And she gets it again. She's and third time is the charm. Persistence has paid off in Grayson's favor. She got two offensive boards on that possession. Jacqueline Norton can't get the shot to fall. Possession goes back to the Cougars. Yes. Substitutions coming in. Rihanna Rick and Megan Leslie stepping in. Out come Jenna O'Brien and 42 for goals looking over at coach. Come get me, come get me. And she gets her request. Harris steps in, number 40. She has that help me, I'm dying look. <laughs> Please help me, I'm falling. Yes. I need water. <laughs> when did it get so dry in here? <laughs> there and you go, that's it. Off. That's what you want to see. SPA will take possession. <laughs> SPA. They're about at their average though, tonight. They're at 43 points, and so is Como Park at 38. We talked about it in the open. This is not going to be a high-scoring affair. It's going to be defense that gets yeah, the job number done tonight. 22. She gets called for the foul. That's Burhalter. Look what Coach is doing right now. He's giving his starters rest. He's got his assistant coach talking to him. He's number 45 out there, you know, and, and number 11, a starter, and let these other people get some rest, and they're going to come back and make a run out of this thing. Leslie shot too strong. Brianna Rick gets the rebound, but Edmondson comes up with it to take it the other way. Last touch by SBA. Como Park keeps possession. Who knocked the ball out? Number 45. Watch out for her. Until they give her a couple years, she's going to make the Spartan something to watch. Uh -oh. Grayson with the basket. We're down three. They are. One possession game. Number 45 finds the open person. <laughs> nice Rihanna job. Rick, and she can't convert. <laughs> Harris with the There's... rebound. Mitchell with the stale. Leslie's going to try it. Short. Lomo comes up with the rebound. Grayson. Great job. Again. Grayson slowing it up. See? Taking her time. Yeah. Don't want to get too slow, though. You only got 10 seconds. There you go. I think Coach Hayes talked her. Salon Look at Dean that. with the basket. It's a one-point game now. Yeah. Timeout. See? Heiser is not liking what he's seeing. You know, I like what I see out of both teams. It's just great to see young talent mature, you know. And what did you say at the beginning of the second half, that this would be a game at this point? Absolutely. And sure enough, Absolutely. Como Park has come back. Well, we've got time. Let's fit in one more trivia question for the folks at home. Okay. This is an, again from the St. Paul City Conference. All right. Who is the only Como Park player listed in the top 25 for career scoring in the St. Paul Conference? Swan Treka Taylor, Erica Taylor, Jenna Giller, or Cassie Kenosh? I'm going to go with the golfer for crying out loud, Seneca Taylor. Swan Treka? Swan Treka, yeah. 
Wrong. Is that who it is? Okay. I'm sorry to say, it's Jenna Giller. Okay. Jenna Giller is the only Como Park player in the top 25. I think I'll give you a half point on that one. Swan Traker Taylor is a was a former Golden Gopher. Thank you. You get a half point on that. Okay. One for uh, providing us with that tidbit of information. Absolutely. Next time, make sure the Gophers on the top here. <laughs> Who's of ever that. drawing these trivia questions? You got a gopher in the lineup, the gopher win. <laughs> Speaking of them, they're 10 and 6. Absolutely. Great job against Wisconsin, huh? Grayson, well above her average tonight with 21 points. She has half of Como Park scoring tonight. Why, oh, St. Paul Academy? Norton. Out of the with time the jumper. Out, gets us two, huh? That's what they call coaching. <laughs> But they found the open, they spread the ball, they found the open person. You've done that shot. once or twice. I yes. I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Watch your passes. Set a Edmondson is going to take the shot herself off the rim. Fight for the rebound. Leslie stepped on the line. Speaking of the Gophers, they're 10 and 6. I mean, a lot of folks expected them to be doormats in the Big Ten Conference. So far, they're proving everybody wrong. A couple quality wins. Well, you know, Pam Borton's been to a Final Four. She's been around a few times, you know, and she knows how to build teams. The Gophers, uh, before she took over, they were doormats, and then enter Lindsey Whalen, and it's all been uphill from there. You mean that kid from Hutchinson? <laughs> Boy, was she Dory ever fine. And one. Good job. Nice job. But where was she at for a couple minutes? On the bench. She's rested, ready to make a run towards the end. I'm telling you, this is going to be a ball game here. I'm not going to say anything about her free throw shooting. I didn't even notice she was there. See? I didn't say anything yes, about the free throw yes, shooting. You thought it. <laughs> I can tell. Me of that Highland Harding game we were at on Friday. Both teams struggling. For There's the a, to oh. oh, three. And, and you see Coach Hayes over He did. She did not want to see that shot. Too quick on that shot. Yes. And Leslie's going to make them not pay for it. But Belkin will. That's two in a row. Makes on the offensive end for 54. SPA coming out with seven, and you look at Reality Edmondson, and that's a good timeout by Coach Hayes. She's trying to keep this game close. She doesn't want Como to run away, I mean, uh, uh, SPA to run away with this thing right now. By the way, on Como Park, five players with three fouls. Well, if you're gonna foul, you might as well balance it out. It keeps everybody Absolutely. in the game. <laughs> Absolutely. You can believe that uh, uh, St. Paul Academy is going to still attack that basket, something fierce. They're not going to sit down and ride this thing. There's too much time left to go with 6.09. Now, we talked about Grayson, who has 21 points uh, with 6.09 to go. Sal Yasmin Salandine has been uh, complement with 14. And then you have Harris with a, a pair. So. Among two players, you have all but two points of Como Park's offense. Just about. And, and that's that's going to change over time. Remember, Mike, in our in our in our broadcast uh, against Central and and Creighton. You know, this this Como team's going to be made in May, and, and, and they're they're growing. You know, I, I see improvement just in this game alone. I mean. They grow and grow and grow and grow. Yeah, Salon, Dean, and Grayson both will be around for oh, next season. Absolutely, and they're going to be just better. Coma Park, they've got a couple pieces to the puzzle. They just get a third score and look out. I, I talked to Coach Hayes earlier, and she said she plans on doing a lot of clinician work with these kids in the summer. Bring them in and work on some shooting, some dribbling, some defense, maybe do a couple of camps. Uh, nothing really, you know, big. You know, just basically get them in the gym and work with them. Get him some practice. Steven Ayler called for a traveling violation. It's only but traveling if they call it. Yeah, Berhalter with the steal. And one. She goes to the charity stripe to make it a three-point play. 
Yes, I'm taking a gamble. A little umbrage on the SBA bench on that last foul, eh? Coaches and referees, it's a love affair made in heaven. No good on the free throw. Jenna O'Brien back in the game. She's going to take a shot. How about that? Switch. That's a seventh grader. Pump fake, go around and shoot the ball in. She's got about five years left with SBA. Yeah. Hey, what do you say? Best thing about a seventh grader, she turns eighth grade? What? <laughs> Tara Grayson with the off balance jumper. No good, but nice presence to try to get something off. She's coming down. And she gets the rebound. Yeah, you're talking about the seventh grader. That's something not, not even Angel Robinson or Ebony Black can boast. Shot blocked by That's what, Duncan. number four for her tonight? Indeed, you are correct, Broderick. I think I'll give you another point for that. Well, thank you. Being an old post player, you look at post play right away. Who needs guards? <laughs> want, we want to give thanks to Meg Stevenson for, for providing us with these statistics tonight. Thanks, Meg. Take of course, you can listen to her on some games that were coming up. Yes. She'll be taking over my spot. Yes. Good block, Mia Lott with the steal. Tried to keep it in bounds. Could not do it. Well, she did keep it in bounds, but uh, went to SPA. Foul. And Megan Leslie will inbound it. And there you get a shot of our statistician. Number Meanwhile, 45. And she put Kristen it up left handed. Left handed layup. You got to love those. Absolutely. She's only a sophomore. That's a ball I, player. I tell you, I, a couple of years from now, you might be hearing about O'Brien, O'Brien, O'Brien all over. Grayson, ball nearly stripped. Traveling violation. SPA with the nine point lead. They're looking to put this one away with 4.09 to go. Como's coming with the pressure. They need to do that. Neither team with any fouls and left if, to give. If, if anything, force St. Paul Academy to make some mistakes, get the ball back. You don't have to get a steal, just make some mistakes. Uh -oh, Kristen O'Brien. 45 again. Oh, oh. And when you're number 45, you get number those 45. lucky bounces. Arch nemesis to Como. Perhalter, air ball. And Jenna O'Brien's going to let that one bounce out. Substitution. Yasmin Salon Dean comes in to replace Brianna Bunting Kennedy. I think Hayes is looking to get some presence back inside. Oh, absolutely. It's down the stretch. She's had her commercial break. It's time to play ball. And, and, there, and you're going to see a whole lot of it. Heavy dosage of number 50 for Como. She's been the number two score for the Cougars tonight. And St. Paul Academy taking their time. They know they're up by 11. They want to eat up some clock. And they'll be shooting the one and one the next foul. Uh, 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 there it is. There's a mistake. There's a mistake. See, Good defense. You don't want to get the foul in right away. Just force them to make a mistake. Be there. Be a constant. Remember I said, Mike, heavy dosage of number 50. And after a bit of an exchange among the referees, the possession goes back to Como Park. Yes. That happens from time to time. Oh, yeah. There's a debate. There's no instant replay, though, so... Number blocked five. Blocked by Belkin, but Grayson's going to try to get the shot off. No bounce, but Salon Dean with a rebound. And the Number third 50. try is the charm. Belkin she has a presence, I'll tell you. Belkin with the block, but Como Park was not going to go away. Oh, no. That's five blocks for Belkin, though. Yes. 
Great job Above by her. Above her average. That, she's got to feel good about that. Number 45. 45. We need to find out who's guarding her. I'm sure the next time out for Como, Ms. Coach Hayes is going to talk about that. Who's got 45? And speaking of her, she gets called for the foul. SPA, no, with no more fouls to give, automatically sends the Mia Lott to the charity stripe. Make it count. Make it count, 42. And silence will fall in the Como Park Gymnasium. Couldn't get it. Ooh. Peralta tried to get the shot off, no good. And a fight for the ball. Grayson comes up with it. It's ruled a jump ball, but it goes to Como Park. Did you hear Grayson there on the floor? She tried to call timeout. Referees couldn't hear her. Well, but nevertheless, I mean, Coach Hayes is, 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 is instilling these things, and that's what it takes. And when she becomes a senior, I'm sure oh, that'll be something sure. that'll be automatic for her. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Lot and one. Gets the foul on the basket on the side. She will go back to the line. Missed her first free throw attempt. Sends out that right arm uh, straight up into the air. Nice uh -oh, call. Kristen O'Brien, she draws the foul. She's yeah. done just about everything tonight. While Belkins come in with the blocks. That was a great crossover by her. Just lost her, per lost the person who was guarding her and went right straight to the hole. That was a good move. Kristen O'Brien, 64% from the charity stripe coming into tonight. Did you have to mention 64%? Okay, Michael. <laughs> well, on the flip side, she is shoot her free throw percentage is better than that of five other players for SBA. As a team, they only shot 55% coming into tonight. We're gonna get a mandate for coming down. How many mandates? Let's see, patience, free throws. Yes. Stephen Ayler shot, no good. Rebound, Megan Leslie. But uh, look at Coma running, people. I mean, that the double team there in the trap. But these are some good things I'm seeing out of Coma. It's a good job, great effort. Hayes trying to call for the timeout, and she and is granted with one. With one minute 38 to go. I'm, as you mentioned, I'm sure one of the things, things she's going to be saying is, watch out for 45. Well, not only that, I think they had the wrong person on 45. The, 40, the number, the, the big person, number 50, is not able to guard her, especially on the open floor. They need to find somebody that can guard her. She's, she's, she's actually has a little more, uh, co uh, you know, quickness than what, what uh, people think she has. We were talking about Tierra Grayson, who is the leading scorer for Como Park with over 20 points. Kristen O'Brien has quietly racked up 17. 17. Not to mention the rebounds, uh, the uh, uh, steals, or, you know, she's just done everything this year. The only thing she hasn't done is block, but Belkin has come in to take care of that. Yes. Yeah. Who, who needs to block when you have Belkin? Yeah. Both teams, though, have to be proud of themselves. They, they are both above their season average in scoring tonight, which is especially good for SBA. I talked to Mark Heiser, and that was one thing he's wanted to work on with this team is getting some more consistency, getting more shots to fall. But the thing is, it's a minute 38, and both of these coaches are coaching right through this game. I mean, you know, they might still be coaching in the locker room when this thing's over. But that's what you want to see with young coaches coaching young teams. Thanks. Coaching, coaching, coaching. That's that's what you want to see. Everybody's working from the bench out. And I'll tell you one thing about coaching young people. Guess what? The coaches learn also. So this is great. This is a great experience for both of them. Both coaches, by the way, this is their first season, uh, respectively. Heiser's first for SBA, Hayes is for Como Park. So 
a lot of learning on both ends of the floor. Absolutely, and I'm impressed with what they're doing. Both of these coaches are really doing a good job with these young kids. SPA taking their time. Como Park forces the turnover, and that's exactly what they need to do right now. One twenty to go. They better. They need to force the turnovers and get some quick shots here. And Niambi Mitchell with the steal, and she gets fouled. <laughs> I bet you one of the things that Coach Hayes works in the offseason, the no-look pass. Get that front foot and forward, forward when you catch the pass, and the front foot forward when you pass the pass. <laughs> I can see it now. We're at one minute 12 left on the clock, and four of the five uh, players on the court for SPA are all underclassmen. Yes. Again, highlighting how young this team is. Oh, absolutely. And you notice how I did not say anything about Mitchell as she was at the charity strike. And what did she what do? was she at? I didn't see her. Well, what did she do? Make her first. Now, and now, what did you do? What did you do? I hope you're proud of yourself. There you go. You willed that thing in, Michael. Good job. See, see I'm helping them out, too. Oh, yeah. See, work Getting that jinx out of them. Yes. Working those distractions yes. out of their heads. That getting monkey them, off their back. Getting them, getting them to focus on the Way basket. Way to find that Salah post. Dean, shot. No good. Less than a minute to go here. And Berhalter with a shot. She gets fouled. She'll go to the line. 53.8, though. Not a lot of time left. And unlike the college game, the clock doesn't stop when a basket is made. Which... That'll come. It's all coming, filtering down to the high school. I, I see what these young coaches, both both teams, both coaches are coaching right through this game. You're talking about filtering down to high school. It was just a year ago that they switched from eight minute quarters to 18 minute halves. Yes. With, and what do you think about that? Well, I think what is gonna happen is that you no longer can, well, the, the rule is uh, trust five, play seven. Now you're gonna have to trust a few more people. <laughs> five might be too much for a young person to stay on the again floor. Although that number 45 hasn't come out much. And SBA can run out the clock here. They're up by 12. Look Looks this. like that they've got this one in the bag. No one's coming out there. Hold that ball right there. Wait, see, they're not even dribbling until somebody gets on them. See, that's so, bas coaching basketball. The Look at them hold that ball. Apart. See that? They're going to hold gonna... that ball until somebody gets on them. That's coaching basketball. They're, they're not going to dribble that ball. They're going to take their time, hold it, burn the clock. Reminiscent of Harlem Globetrotters play. Just pass it around. Less than 18 to go. That, that is just good chalk basketball up their there. victory here in about great 14 job. seconds. Some great execution. And Absolutely. Stephen Naylor finally fouls them, but it comes too little Coach, too late. I was watching their bench. He mentioned that on their bench before they went out. You know, that is good basketball. And I'm sure he practiced that. Pra you practice that in, in practice all the time, too. Hold the, hold the ball. Wait till somebody comes up on you. And look who's at the charity stripe. Number 45. Kristen O'Brien. You see that? Uh, and you've heard me say it before, Mike. It's so important to just catch the ball and see what's, what's, what's around you. A lot of times a young person, especially young, will catch the ball and start dribbling right away. Both teams have nothing to be ashamed of, though. I mean, they both came out, they played oh, defensively. Absolutely. These are two young teams who... Oh, Como's energy was... I mean, Como's energy's still there. I mean, they're trying even, to do something. Even in the final seconds, they're not going to give up. No, no. Grayson's three goes in and out. And SPA has it, they're just going to run out the clock. They move to four and seven with a 61 to 48 victory. But as we just said, both these teams deserve credit tonight. These are two teams in the future. You're going to be hearing about them in their respective conferences. There is absolutely no doubt. And the thing is, we'll see Como in what, another, another week or so again, and we're going I, to see a better Como then. I mean, I, I, help, we, I can't help but feel. We see them in a few days, actually, when yeah, they go okay. to place uh, the top school in the state, Central. That's going to be a tough Well, they got matchup. the big red, huh? Uh, big red, and then we... And then later on, we'll be seeing them against Arlington. And they have a lot of things to be proud of. To recap the scoring for you, Tierra, Tierra Grayson comes in with 21 points. Yasmin Salandin with 16 points. Brittany Siebenhaler comes in with three points. And three players were tied at two. Brianna Berhalter, Mia Lott, 
and number 40, Harris. To recap the scoring for SPA, Kristen O'Brien leading scorer with 18 points. Joy Belkin and Megan Leslie complimented her with 10 points apiece. Niambi Mitchell comes in with 8 points. Jacqueline Norton with 6. Jenna O'Brien, the 7th grader, with 4. And Brianna Rick and Natalie Olson Studler with a pair. And we're going to throw it to Todd Johnson, who has an interview with Kristen O'Brien, marquee player in tonight's victory for SBA. Take it away, Todd. Okay, we're down on the court with a winning coach, uh, Mark Heiser, and uh, this is kind of like the O'Brien family hour. We start out the game talking to your sister, Jenna. This is Kristen O'Brien. Uh, uh, Kristen, first of all, how does it feel to win? Good. I don't know. We have a, I don't know. It's good. <laughs> all right, Coach, uh, Coach uh, Kristen hit some big shots there down the end. Yeah, she hit some very big shots, played really well boxing out. Um, getting on the floor, getting tough rebounds, playing defense. So she did a really good job. Now, uh, I think the key turning point in the game, there's seven minutes to go, you call timeout, you're up by one, and then you go on a 12-2 run, finish out on a 15-6 run. What did you tell the kids? Uh, we really just stretched defense, playing tough defense, um, boxing out, and then having a little patience on the offensive end. We, get, we got a little crazy down there for a little bit, throwing it around, but had some patience, worked the ball around, and then we got some good shots out of it. Christian, it looked like you guys held it together. You had a lot of poise. Uh, what, what, what do you think you guys did there in the last uh, seven minutes to pull it out? I don't know. I think we just stuck together as a team. We didn't give up on each other. Like I felt like they were giving up on their other teammates, so we just stuck together. You stuck with the pressure. So uh, your, your thoughts the rest of the way? This is your second win in a row. Uh, it's got to feel good. What, what does this help you uh, into the next game? I think it gives us our confidence back. We lost a couple in a row, so... So you took a couple big spills there. Are you feeling okay after this one? Yeah, I'm fine. One last question. We interviewed your sister before the game. Uh, how was it playing with your younger sister? It was awkward at first, but she was on varsity soccer too, so it was okay. All right. Coach, you don't have any complaints having the O'Brien family together? Not at all. Hopefully there's some more coming up. Okay, there you have it. Well, the winning coach, leading scorer of the game, and uh, the Spartans come away with the victory. Back upstairs, you guys. Thank you, Todd. And that will do it from here, from Como Park High School. The final score once again, St. Paul Academy Spartans with 61, Como Park Cougars with 48. We'd like to thank Meg Stevenson, our statistician, Todd Johnson, our courtside reporter, for Broderick Bell, and everyone else here at Keystone Productions. This is Mike Eden. So long, everybody. Good night.